Welcome to the Cantina Chatter Podcast. Turn up your nostalgia. everyone and welcome back. I'm Victoria, your host here on the Cantina Chatter podcast, your resource for new and retro toys, pop culture, and randomness from the 80s and 90s. So San Diego Comic Con 2019 has come and gone, another year, another con. And uh, as always, there was a lot to see, there was a lot to do. Of course, I kept busy primarily with uh, all the toy companies and all the collectibles companies that were in attendance. Uh, it's fun to catch up with them every year and, you know, visit with the same reps and uh, have interviews and stuff and product walkthroughs, all that fun stuff. Um, a lot of which uh, we did document and put up on the YouTube channel for Victoria's Cantina. Uh, it was great visiting with Hasbro, with Mattel, with uh, David Silva from Creative Beast Studio, from uh, NECA and uh, just a multitude of different companies and you know visiting with friends and uh, yeah such a great time and uh, of course I was very busy you know with all the coverage and um, I totally love doing all that like going and covering all the toy lines that we love but I think next year I'm just gonna go as like a fan um, there's just so much to do every time I try and cover everything and you know I'm, I always miss things there's never enough time to get to everything unless you know you're there for multiple days and usually I'm not because of work so I try and go on the Saturday and uh, you know it's, it's a madhouse so uh, but totally worth it to catch up with friends I would say that's the absolute best thing about comic-con or any of these conventions is uh, visiting with the people that uh, you only see at these types of events or that you've come to know online and then get to meet for the first time in person or see again in person. I think that's the absolute best aspect of all of this stuff. So yeah, it was a total blast. And in this episode, I want to focus on the Star Wars reveals from San Diego Comic-Con, from Hasbro, from Hot Toys, and just the overall presence of Star Wars at San Diego Comic-Con. So, so we'll be catching up with my friend Tom Charlton, who is back on the show to help me dissect and uh, digest all of the information that came out uh, regarding Star Wars. So we'll be talking to him shortly. Uh, specifically for Star Wars over on the YouTube channel, I recently reviewed the Star Wars 3-pack that was available at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, that is the Vintage Collection Special Action Figure Set that has three Luke Skywalker figures. It is phenomenal. One of the best things that I think Hasbro has done in a really long time. I mean, they've done some really awesome things like the Sail Barge and really cool stuff for the Vintage Collection this year. But uh, I think this is one of the best things. So uh, if that sounds interesting. I hope you'll check it out. I've also been doing some Star Wars The Black Series reviews. Uh, did the recent archive releases, Darth Maul and Anakin Skywalker. Um, Darth Maul wasn't really a huge improvement over the previous release, but Anakin's actually a really, really huge upgrade and very surprising when I compare him to the SH Figure Arts Anakin, so uh, I was pretty surprised about that. Also took a look at the Black Series Chopper uh, from Star Wars Rebels and Ezra Bridger. Both phenomenal figures, I mean, especially Chopper. I think he's probably like a top five. So I know some of you asked me to do more Star Wars The Black Series reviews, so I'm trying to do that. Uh, unfortunately, they don't get quite as much attention as a lot of the other things that I review, even though I was among the first people to review them on YouTube back in 2013. And of course, I try and focus my energy into the things that people are actually going to watch and enjoy. And I know some of you really appreciate these videos, though, so I am trying to get more of them out there where it makes sense to do so. So please check those out. And of course, I'll have more Star Wars reviews on the channel in the near future as well. And of course, we're counting down the months to all the new Disney Star Wars content that's coming uh, for TV and film. Of course, we got The Mandalorian. We've got Jedi Fallen Order, the game. We have Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. So uh, we're kind of in the slow period still. Uh, the calm before the storm when things really ramp up this fall with 
Triple Force Friday and then, you know, leading up to the launches of all this new content. So I'm um, really excited for that, but just kind of trying to enjoy the slower pace right now while there's not a whole lot of Star Wars collectibles to, to buy because we are kind of in that, you know, off season, so to speak. All right, so in this episode, we're happy to welcome back once again our collecting correspondent for Star Wars, Tom Charlton. Welcome back, sir. Hi, Victoria. How, how are you doing? Oh, man, I'm good. I'm, I'm kind of tired. I'm recovering from San Diego Comic-Con, and, you know, I, I thought that all I needed was a few drinks and a little bit of, uh, you know, relaxation, but apparently not, because I, now i got to edit all the coverage <laughs> <laughs> I did from yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah, you so, got you got you got to take a few days off and have some drinks during those days. Yeah, yeah. So trying to recover from that, but no, I'm doing good. It was, uh, you know, Comic Con is always a blast to attend. It's always great to see everybody in their costumes. It's great to uh, hang out with people that you've met online and mm. uh, catch up with friends and visit with all these companies that we love and. Uh, but, you know, it, it's also very overwhelming. There's also a ton of people. It seems like every year there's more and more people that, you know, attend this event. And, uh, yeah, it just gets to the point where, you know, you can't even move at some point. So, you know, that's not that's not fun. But um, uh, we're not going to focus on the pros and cons of Comic-Con. We're going to talk about what we do best here on Cantina Chatter, and that is discuss toys. So are you ready? Yes, uh, absolutely. Always ready to chat about toys even when there aren't any toys to chat about. Of course, of course. Uh, so, all right, we're going to start off with Hasbro Star Wars. Mm. Now, uh, okay, so, <laughs> yeah. So it, it's interesting because I think a lot of us thought going into Comic-Con we were going to get a lot of uh, reveals uh, for Vintage Collection, for Black Series, if not for, uh, you know, Rise of Skywalker, at least for other things they were planning on doing between now and then. Um Unfortunately, we really didn't get anything good. Yeah, that was um so I feel bad for anyone that actually attended that that panel and my honest opinion is I don't think they should have had one at all. If they were going to have a panel that revealed that tiny amount of 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 stuff when I think by this point in time they know that the the people that go to those things get most excited for the black series or the vintage collection stuff or anything that corresponds with the the old three and three quarter inch line that we've been collecting for 40 years yeah um if they're not going to show anything for those things and then on top of that you don't even have much else in your other miscellaneous camp of stuff just don't have a panel say sorry we're, we're no we'll Send a little display because the display looked awesome. Mm -hmm. What a what a really cool display they had. I I was I was in shock. I was honestly in shock, and I I I don't think the excuse oh we can't reveal anything because it's all Rise of Skywalker holds any weight. Mm. A we know what those characters look like. We've seen the trailer for it, and they're you know just kind of the same characters again and again. And B they have ten other movies they could pull from. Yeah. I mean, this was never the case, you know, in the pre-Disney era. I, I know that we haven't really had films until, you know, the last several years, you know. But, uh, I mean, even going back to the Lucas days, you know, for, uh, the prequel era, you know, they were always showing new stuff. It's just like, it's yep. really too bad that Disney has, you know, or, or Lucasfilm have this really, like, firm grip on what gets out and what doesn't. Because like you said, we've seen the trailer. I mean, we know the basic designs that these characters mm -hmm. have. You know, the Sith Trooper, I mean, that's that's a new thing. But, you know, we've seen it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but and we know what Ray's wearing. Trooper. Yeah, we we know what uh, Finn is wearing, Poe, and you know some of those other you know char new characters. But uh -huh. it, it just doesn't make sense. At the very least, just show us the basics. You know that that we can expect Kylo Ren. You know all the stuff we know we're going to get in action figure form. There's really no point in holding those ever for later. No, it, it it's it's absurd. It was the same as the problem with um the 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 Force Awakens, the build up to that, where in their their Force Friday there, they refused to have like Han Solo or Leia show up in it. Like we know these characters are in the movie. Why why are you why are you being so secretive about this? How does that build excitement? Right. I I don't I just don't think it does at this point in time. And on top of that, so like Marvel doesn't have a movie now coming out until what next May. 
I think. Were they able to show anything for their Marvel Legends stuff? Did you see did you see if Marvel happened to reveal anything new? Or were they like, we can't reveal anything because Black Widow is coming out next year? Yeah, I haven't finished watching the panel. I started it last night, but I was falling asleep. <laughs> so <laughs> I haven't finished watching that video that's on YouTube. But uh, no, I mean, when I was there at the Hasbro preview breakfast on uh, Thursday morning, they, they had a lot of Marvel Legends. That's actually where like all the attention was. Uh -huh. Like people were just like basically skipping past Star Wars and going straight to the Marvel area. Right. Right. Uh, that's where they had all their focus. That's where they had like the most, like in terms of reveals, they revealed a, like a whole new wave of figures. Yeah. And, um, you know, but I mean, it, it isn't anything like as far as new characters go. It was just like stuff from uh, the more recent films, you know, like Avengers, um, Endgame and, and so forth. But I mean, that's still cool. I mean, I would have liked to have at least seen, you know, you know, a wave of whatever's next from the original trilogy or the prequel trilogy, you know, stuff that already right. exists. It didn't need yeah. to be like Rise of Skywalker, even though I think, like I said, that would have been, you know, just the bare minimum would have been to have had those uh, very, you know, core characters on display. But uh -huh. it, it's a little irritating. Um, and uh, it, it, it is weird. It, it is weird seeing how they treat the different properties like that, because, I mean, they definitely don't have the same level of secrecy surrounding, um, it doesn't seem like to me, uh, the Marvel films, the way they do Star Wars. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Marvel films also, like, in general, I would I would say, you can go into the movie and know what's going to happen in the movie. And at the end of the movie, what you expected was going to happen will just happen. <laughs> um, I mean, there, <laughs> there's no real surprises there, unless you're one of the people that got surprised that they killed people in Infinity War for, you know, a brief instant but um yeah i figured that out from watching the trailer um yeah i mean there's there's all the talk about disney being concerned about the brand of star wars right now and you know some of us on the 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 out there that really like the new products are like no it's it's not a problem but they just had comic-con and they didn't and they didn't reveal anything uh -huh. that suggests that they're concerned to me yeah, that suggests that, that, you know, those those people that they're right. I mean, we know that after Rogue One products started to just sit on the shelves. We still have Jyn or so's. We still have Krennix. We still have these people sitting on the shelves. Last Jedi stuff not selling very well. Solo stuff not selling very well. Yep. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. it's true. It's unfortunate. But um, that's basically uh, where we are. And I think I think it's a combination of a few things. I think it's a combination of not having those core characters on, you know, uh, for sale right when those films were coming out for Force right. Friday. Uh, yeah. That and also, you know, just the general designs haven't been that great, to be honest. What, are you tired of another, another, you know, person wearing a Earth Tones jacket? I mean, it's even the aliens. It's like Sarko Plank and oh God, Constable Sarko Plank. Zuvio and you know, I, I can't even remember the names of all these guys. But no, they, nothing was. Mm. I mean, yeah. there, there's been, there's a couple aliens that look cool, and I know they've done them. There was like that two pack with um, I don't know that red guy, and then the alien with oh. the peg leg. Yes, love those guys. Those guys are great. Those those, are those good. guys are wonderful. I, I love them. But yes, yeah, Sarko Plank. Who, uh, he's a blink and you miss him character. Constable Zuvio, who is cut from the final thing. There's a wolf guy that like shows up mm, right yeah, at the start yeah. of Maz Kanata's castle, but that's also almost blink and you miss him. Like they should have had the the big fat goblin looking thing with the tusks, Grumger or something. You know, with a, uh, you know, with the girl that's next to him. That was like in previews and stuff. Sell us that. Sell us uh, Baba Joe. Baba Joe was the little camel guy that had that looked like he was selling a bunch of birds or something on his back um, mm. from The Force Awakens. He was a neat character. Solo is the the one movie that I think was just loaded up with great stuff that I would love to buy just about all of. Uh, every single character that sat around the Sabacc table with Lando and Han, I want all of them. I want yeah. them in three packs. They don't need to be super articulate. And uh, uh, all the, like, lots of the characters in Dryden's yacht, Dryden's enforcers, the little, um, the singing lady with the, the glass jar with a head in it that was singing as well. Sell me that. Like, I, I buy those things. Yeah, I mean, there's so many great designs. Uh, Rogue One also, I mean, it, it was just jam-packed full of really cool-looking aliens. And um, they didn't make any of them in figures like early on in either of those lines for, you know, Rogue One or Solo. And I think that's, you know, really been to the detriment of how intriguing this line looks to kids. Because you got to remember, I mean, if kids are going to, they're, they're probably going to go for the things that look cool, you know, the things that look the most unique and stand out to them. I mean, that's how I always was. I was going for the yeah. aliens and 
just whatever really grabbed my imagination. I mean, a, a figure in a, an earth tone costume, like a human or a, a character like Sargo Plank just really isn't going to do it for me if I'm a kid. Yeah, no, that that was all the original the original line. It was always filled up with all the extra cantina aliens or Jabba's aliens or, or things like that. Those were the things that made it fun and exciting to collect. That's why people yeah. got excited and spent, you know, bought 9,000, almost 9,000 Jabba the Hutt sail barges just to populate with all those figures they'd been collecting all these years. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the things that uh, were revealed from the panel. So sure. um, we'll start off with the vintage collection. Tell us <laughs> everything that was revealed. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, 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 man, Victoria. I'm really excited to talk about all the reveals from the vintage collection. And there you have it, guys. Uh, those are the reveals from the Star Wars Vintage Collection at Hasbro uh, San Diego Comic Con 2019. Man, yeah, what a great I panel. Mean, they could have, you know, they could have at least given us one. I mean, there, there's really good, like, intelligence out there to suggest right. that there's a couple of original trilogy figures coming later this year. Um, yeah. Would it have killed them to mention one or two of them? I, I just, uh, what, what has your intelligence suggested we'll get? Uh, well, going by Yak Face, uh, cause uh-huh. you know, yakface.com, he, uh, yep. you know, Jason does an awesome job, you know, scouring the internet and finding the most minuscule details that, uh, uh come to fruition, uh, in most cases. And, uh, yeah, he's reported things like a Luke and ceremonial outfit. Right. Uh, right. and, um, Leia and ceremonial outfit, I think. I think the repack yeah, yeah. of the, uh, I, I don't think I care about Luke in ceremonial outfit, but, um. Well, that Black Series figure, I'm sure it's going to be a repack, and that one looked a lot like Marty McFly. Oh, wait, what? Is there a Black Series one? Yeah, three and three quarter. Oh, right, the three and three quarter one, right. Um, yeah. I, I thought I thought for the, the six inch line. I, I don't think I'd bother with either of those for the three and three quarter or six inch. But the Leia one, that's such a great outfit. Yeah. That's such a great outfit. Like having that on a vintage card with like the cool photo that n- need to have that. I've, I've got yeah. that. Yeah, we, we do. I don't like the sleeves the way they did that on that figure, though. Oh, I don't recall what the sleeves looked like. In that well, one, they're not they're not film accurate at all, because in the movie, they're, they're actually connected to the bodice of the outfit. And for the figure, they're detached from her shoulders. So, hmm. yeah, it's uh, something I would hope they would fix if they went mm. back. I doubt it. But yeah. Uh, at the bare minimum, the figure would probably have photo reels, so that would be an upgrade. Right, yeah. Uh, don't forget, uh, remember, um, I think last year they announced uh, Darth Revan was going to be re-released on the Vintage Collection. Yeah. I... Darth Revan. Yeah, he's canceled. Is he? Uh, I, Not... I think... Uh, it's at I'm least delayed. I... Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Yakface had a, found a skew for him recently. So I think oh, he's they did? Still, I think oh, he's okay. still coming. It just, I... uh, he Not, for whatever reason... Year. For whatever reason, he was removed from the wave he was supposed to be a part of. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that that means they're going back and doing a new one rather than just repacking one from over ten years ago. Yeah, that that was a real peculiar decision on their part. I'm one of those people that was lucky enough to to get both he and uh, Darth Malak when they were available on Hasbro Toy Shop, you know, ten, twelve years ago now, I guess. Um, so I I've never even understood that his face was wrong until like the new one came out and people were talking about it. Um, cause I never played the video game. I was just, that was, that was back when I was starting to get back into collecting and I'd uh-huh. owned a modern Vader, Dooku, Sidious and Maul. Um, and I was like, I just want to own all the Sith Lords and those will be the only figures I get. Wink. Having like a Darth Revan with the, the correct face would be really cool. Just shrink down the black series one. Yep. So looking at Black Series, uh, how, many, <laughs> how many Black Series <laughs> reveals do we have to talk about today? Well, on the bright side, we sort of do have one. The fans voted for the Empire Strikes Back, exciting new character, yet another Luke. But this one is <sighs> Sleeveless Luke from Dagobah. So, okay, God. he's a new figure, but it's just it- another Luke. It, it kills me that they voted for that. It was like by 1%, right, that he won over um, a, a different character. Really? Was it that small? I it thought, like I thought Lobot was the shoe in No, and then it, it was, like, was yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't know why people, I mean, with a fan, fan vote, this is your one opportunity to vote for a figure that they're never going to make otherwise. And if you go for Luke, which they're going to get to all the Lukes eventually, there's only so many ways they can do Luke, you know? Yeah. Um, 
oh gosh, it, it, hopefully they do more of those figures, or at least they see that there's interest in Lobot or a uh, Hoth Trooper, Probe Droid, or what have you. But right. it just seems like a waste to me. I mean, it's cool we're getting him. I mean, don't get me yeah. wrong. It's just like, it just feels like a waste to vote for a character like Luke when you know they're going to do it anyway. Yeah, that's my feeling on it as well. It really just feels like you you you, th- you threw away the opportunity to get something kind of weird or at least at this point i'd like a new character yeah yeah something we don't have in this line and then they they just they spent the entire panel talking about uh how getting his arms right was dif- difficult or something right and i think that was when i was i was uh following star wars action news's tweets on it that was when i started to get the sinking suspicion that we weren't going to be seeing anything yeah so uh they uh, they showed some uh production i guess like I guess it's very, really loosely, if you want to call them production images. They showed some, uh, gosh, how, what do we call it? Even the call digital these? sculpt. There you go. They yeah, showed digital. some digital sculpts of this Luke figure and just kind of showed the progress. And um, which, you know, I mean, that's something. It's not a new product reveal, but at least, you know, there's that's the most we got out of Black Series six inch, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, uh, they announced Hyper Real Luke, which, you know, the rumors had already kind of hinted that this was going to be the one that was coming because yeah i guess that one of the previous i think it was a toy fair um, yeah, it was a toy fair they sort of let it slip or somebody mm-hmm. you know there mentioned that luke was coming but yeah uh, i went i went and did toy fair for you and and they they said something like oh well darth vader's got a this is from darth empire strikes back and we know he's got to fight someone so we'll see who's next it was something like that i was like oh okay so luke's coming next yeah yeah so i mean it looks cool what they've shown us Uh, we haven't seen the actual like figure but we've seen some images that they they showed us so that's cool i mean whatever they want to do with hyper real is fine i don't really invest too much in type uh, one way or the other but uh when we did talk toy fair reveals uh on that previous episode you did mention how hyper real vader is a lot better in person and yeah uh having seen it and b- been able to handle it i totally agree with you it's a lot more fun in person you know it's very mm-hmm. posable and uh it is cool that all the articulation is hidden in that internal skeleton so yeah that's that's really cool my issue with the hyper real stuff is most of the scales of of things that people collect vary between the six inch scale or the 12 inch scale would you agree with that yes they're all kind of around that that size now i've got a shredder over here that sees maybe about six inches tall and you know a he-man figure that's you know six and a half inches tall so it's not quite correct but if i put them on a shelf together they can kind of all work together this hyper real thing is eight inches tall who's that that doesn't fit with anything that anyone collects um mm-hmm. And I, so I don't think that these things are going to catch on, especially at the price point. I think that if someone really wants a really great, super articulate, awesome fader, they're going to go in a 12 inch scale and get something that's going to cost, you know, 200 bucks, but that'll be like their thing that they have. Um, yeah, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, it is a weird scale. And it, it really bothers me as a collector who collects different lines, you know, when, when everything is kind of off because you know, six inch is kind of like an industry standard at this point. So most figures for most lines are six inch. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, uh, you have things like seven inch scale from companies like NECA or Diamond Select or um, McFarland. They, they all do the seven inch scale. Uh, but then like Mattel uh, has said their new Jurassic line is going to be 6.5 inch scale. So, what? I mean, that's even that's like a noticeable difference when you stand them side by side on the shelf. So I just yeah. kind of wish that, you know, that everybody would stick with six inch oh geez yeah that's disappointing yeah anyway so let's talk about uh what they did reveal uh this time from the presentation so we got to talk a little bit about uh the galaxy of adventures five inch scale figures yeah five inch scale figures now so no thanks um (laughs) i the Clone Wars animated line for three and three quarter, I love. I'm crazy about them. I wish if they come out with any more Clone Wars figures that they would be in the animated style like the show that I've been watching. I thought yeah. that those things were amazing. I have almost all of them. I wish that when they did the six inch versions of these characters, it was in the same style. I understand why it's not. They they revealed Darth Vader, C-3PO, Han Solo, and Chewbacca. And I think the designs are cool. But once again, just like Hyper Real Vader doesn't fit in with my six inch collection which if they were six inch i'd probably get them doesn't fit in with my three and three quarter i'm not collecting a new scale yeah 
And if you don't have a vast enough selection of these things, eh, I, I don't I don't know if it's going to take off. It, it's weird. I mean, I saw them at the booth and, you know, honestly, they look cool. They remind me a lot, though, of the uh, Disney Store uh, toy box. I think they're called. Um, yeah, that they do. They're like four inch figures. And I mm-hmm. have Vader and I have Ray, but I haven't really gotten into it all that much. Yeah, um, I've got rem- Kylo It Ren. seems like. Yeah. So there. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, kind of what to expect. They're kind of similar to that. Obviously, they're a little bigger and proportions are a little bit different but they do kind of have that you know sort of animated looking feel to them which galaxy of adventures to begin with i mean it's cool and all but i mean the episodes are like a minute long so (laughs) right (laughs) i can't really get into that i mean it's just it's like it looks cool for that one minute but then it's like okay what's next you know it's it I, i don't i don't get it yeah as an animation guy i look at them and say oh that's 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 some pretty fun animation that's pretty neat but it's, I don't watch all of them because I just mostly don't care. Um, I've checked out a couple. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. That's fun. But, you know, I, I don't understand why they think that an entire toy line, and again, as far as an entire toy line goes, I think it's going to be incredibly abbreviated. Um, yeah. I think we'll get a Luke and a Leia, and that'll probably be it. Mm. Yeah, I don't get it. And Galaxy of Adventure has already had like its own little toy line, you know, like they did these little five POA repacks with the little comic book and the little, they came in little tubes and yeah. they're still at some Walmarts in the area and uh, mm-hmm. maybe even Target. So it just kind of like, all right, well, to me, that seems like sufficient enough for, for what Galaxy of Adventures <laughs> is trying to accomplish. It's like, why do you yeah. need to, to do another toy line on top of all that? Like, this feels to me like something that you do maybe like in a couple of years once the movies are done and when yeah. the TV shows are maybe winding down and you don't have anything else to do. It's like, okay, why why right now, you know, when we have, you know, this new movie that's coming pretty soon, when we have these new TV series that are coming, it's like, why do this now? It just feels like really weird timing to me. Yeah, it just it just perplexes me. A lot of these things, a lot of the decisions, a lot of the things that were shown just perplexed me. Um, I'm not a fan of Star Wars Resistance. I've watched maybe five episodes, and I I just don't like it at all. Um, but they didn't even show any new figures from that. No, so they that, said it's done. Oh, it's oh, it's done. Yeah, oh, okay. They, they're they just said not. There's nothing else planned. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? They just said that that's done. Yeah, they don't have anything else lined up. Uh, what we've seen is uh, what we get. So, for a resistance, I guess it didn't do very well. I know they announced a second season, but you've you've got to prepare that pretty early on when in animation. I mean, the figures were were cool. It's just like you know, I think you know, it's it's one of the it, it's definitely a more kid oriented series uh-huh. than Rebels, which is more kid oriented than you know the the latter part of Clone Wars. So it's just kind of like one of those things. It just seems odd. The whole thing, like I said, the timing, the the five inch thing, the fact that galaxy of adventures has another toy line i don't get it i don't want to focus on it too much but it just seems like a really weird thing to to do yeah and then they also they i know that they said that the retro figures did gangbusters for them um that's cool hopefully they'll make some more of those i can understand why between now between now and back in toy fair why if if you know they didn't have another set uh ready to show because it takes time, and I guess they were really kind of surprised by it. Um, but other than that, what they show, they showed an X-Wing helmet and a Boba Fett helmet, right? Yes. All right. Anyway. Yeah, those the X-Wing helmet actually looks really cool. It looks really detailed. Yeah, I've got, I, I dressed up as Kylo Ren for Halloween back in, I think, 2016, uh, and Lena dressed up as General Hux, and we did really super screen accurate outfits. So I ended up splurging and getting the Kylo Ren helmet from the Black Series for that. Yeah. Um. So I've got that, but you know, I use it as a costume. Uh, it, it, I think it can probably just go into storage now. <laughs> Are you planning on getting Boba Fett or X Wing helmet? Uh, I haven't bought any of them so far, uh, just because they're expensive, and you know I'm usually focused on too many other things. But I kind of regret having not gotten like like the Kylo Ren, which is going for like over two hundred dollars now. You're kidding me, really? No, yeah. Oh so, wow, I'm glad I got uh, it for sixty or whatever. I got it on yeah. sale. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so okay, for Haslab, uh, there wasn't anything announced. We for this year that in recent weeks they did announce Cookie Monster for Sesame Street. And uh, which looks awesome. Yeah. And, so uh, can I can I talk about Cookie Monster for a second? Sure. So I'm not I'm not going to get either of these new things because they're not in the the realm of things that I can collect. But Cookie that Cookie Monster is beautiful. It is really really cool. It's really, and I I'm startled. I think it's going to flop. 
because I think it doesn't have even 300 backers yet, whereas Unicron, what you know, the other one, is, you know, is tracking sort of like uh, the sale barge originally did. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know why Hasbro isn't doing more to advertise their Cookie Monster. It's a better price point, and it's for a Sesame collector, and they're out there. There's, they only need 3,000 they need to get to, to do it. It strikes me that they should be able to hit that number. Um, I don't know. It's, it feels to me like Hasbro has given up on that one, which is too bad because it's Cookie Monster is amazing. Yeah, I, I didn't even see the Cookie Monster. I don't know if they had it on, in the booth, but I, I didn't even see it. You saw a Unicron though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I got some pictures and video of that. That looks really cool too. My but God. again, it's I don't do Transformers. I don't know how big you are in collecting them. No, I, the only Transformer I own is the Megatron that came with the swag bag from Toy Fair. Um, and the only reason I asked to keep that one as opposed to sending it to you is because he looks like the old 80s cartoon guy. <laughs> and he's around the same scale as my 6-inch NECA Shredder and my 6, 6.5-inch six uh, uh, Skeletor. So now I just need, you know, the bad guy from G.I. Joe, Cobra Commander, in that scale. And uh, I've got all the 80s bad guys that matter to me. Mm, nice. So for this year, uh, as far as exclusives go, they did have some Star Wars product and uh, other lines too, obviously. Uh, For Star Wars, they did the Sith Trooper, which uh, was something that was only recently announced. Uh, So it's basically the Sith Trooper. It's the red Stormtrooper. I think the whole thing was a new sculpt. Maybe the arms are reuse, but uh, it, it looked like it was pretty much brand new. And it had all these accessories that came with it. Yeah. Uh, they also did a Boba Fett in the uh, Kenner coloration on a six-inch scale vintage card back. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the vintage collection Luke three pack that had a, I think it's called Destiny of Luke Skywalker or something. Yeah. And it has it has a X wing Luke, Stormtrooper Luke, and Jedi Luke. You got the three pack, right? I got the three pack because by the time I was able to get in uh, there to buy them, that's all they had left for mm-hmm. for Star Wars. Uh, which was a huge bummer because uh, I had been trying. Okay, so what happens at Comic Con sometimes is that uh, you know there's a lot of people trying to buy exclusives, so the line gets full. So then what they do is they cut the line off, and then they have like a backup line, like a line for the line, and um, you know it's it's an overflow line, and and you have to get into that. But if that gets full, then that gets cut off, and then you can't even get in that line. So you just have to keep walking by and hope that it's opened and. Mm-hmm. You know, you spend like 10, 20, 30 minutes like just going back and forth hoping it's it's going to be open. Sometimes it is, but rare, most of the time it isn't. Um, so by the time, you know, the, uh, I try to get in this line really early on. I tried to mm-hmm. do it for Mattel as well, but uh, it was the same thing. Like the overflow line was, was blocked off, so I couldn't get into that. So then I tried to get into Hasbro, but eventually like I had stuff to do. You know, I had like meetings set up and I had uh, interviews that I had to conduct at certain times. So... You know, there it, it just wasn't possible for me to get in as early as I would have liked to have. Uh, so by the time I got back over there and got in that line, um, it, unfortunately, those figures were just sold out. Boba Fett was gone. The Sith Trooper was gone, both of which I really, really, really wanted. Um, so I ended up just getting the Luke pack, which, which is fine. That's obviously better than nothing. But, you know, that just goes to show that. A lot of people get upset about convention exclusives. Oh, I can't make it to the convention to buy it. Well, it's like, even if you go, you're not even guaranteed to get it anyway. So that's basically what happened. And uh, luckily, they will be putting these up online in September, I think they said. So mm-hmm. uh, that'll be another opportunity to hopefully uh, grab those others that I missed. But yeah, for now, I have the Luke pack. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'm pretty impressed with it. Yeah, that, that, one, that one seems pretty neat. I, I think I've already got versions of those um those guys anyway the boba fett and the 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 red stormtrooper i think are for me they're kind of the perfect idea of a convention exclusive in that as someone like i've got a boba fett my boba fett looks like he does in one of the movies i'm good with that the fact that they came out with a color one painted like the the old action figure that's really cool but i Mm -hmm. don't need it so i'm not like ah i've got to have it yeah. And I know that this, the Red Stormtrooper, they're just going to sell in the main line and Force Friday anyway. Um, and as cool as he looks for me, he's 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 a Red Stormtrooper. <laughs> um, that's not to say I'm not going to buy two Sith Troopers when they come out, because, you know, who am yeah. I kidding? What I don't know is if they're going to have all those accessories that the exclusive version has. Cause they definitely it, won't. They definitely won't. You're yeah. totally right there. 
So that's the thing. All, really, all you need is one of the exclusives, and then you know you're good. You can buy however oh. many standalone ones you want. So I, I kind of yeah. So that's a really good point. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, but you know, with any luck, uh, you know, Hasbro Pulse uh, coming up in September, we'll, you know, we'll be able to get what we want, and that's always a crapshoot. But you know, hmm. hopefully it works out. But um, yeah, so in any case, I did a and a with Hasbro and uh, I published that today on the Victoria's Cantina YouTube channel. Uh, they were gracious enough to t- take some time out of their very busy schedule to speak with us. So I got to visit with uh, Director of Global Brand Marketing and Strategy, Sarah Carroll, and Production Design Manager, Sam Smith, um, to talk about, uh, you know, the latest going ons in the Hasbro Star Wars line. So did you get a chance to check out that video? I did, yeah. Thank you for sending that to me. Honestly, I I did enjoy that more than the actual panel itself. <laughs> um, I I thought it was it was more interesting information, and because you didn't ask questions like, "Is this coming? Is this coming?" and then said you were sort of prescriptive with like, "Hey, I think fans would like this." Um, I think we got more out of it than you know. Are you going to make Count Dooku? I'm sorry, we can't <laughs> reveal anything until Force Friday. Are you yeah. going to make Jar Jar? We can't reveal anything until Triple Force Friday. Um, so I think your your line of questioning there was really good. And uh, I I think we, we got insights that we're probably going to get more Jabba style play sets. And you might you might you might pull off making the making the Tonica sister happen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Maybe. Uh, it, it's it's always, uh, you know, I've done this enough times where, you know, you, you like you said, you can't just go ask, are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? Because they're never going to say yes or no one way or the other. Sometimes you can kind of read them and mm-hmm. get an idea. But I mean, that's the best case. So, um, yeah, it's all I guess it's all about how you phrase it and, you know, just just suggesting and, you know, saying, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? But yeah. um, no, I hope the Tonica sister happens. Um uh, I, I've been very blessed to become friends with Angela Staines over the last couple of years. So she was on Cantina Chatter in 2017, and mm-hmm. uh, it was really her first like true interview about Star Wars, like mm-hmm. in, four, in 40 years. So, uh, it, you know, really lucky to have had her on the show and you know gotten her insight on you know what Star Wars has been to her, what it's meant, and you know why we don't have a figure of her still. And she was very <laughs> forthcoming about why that was. She just never signed the release because she didn't think it was fair that. Uh, she would basically get nothing in return for uh, for having her figure made. And the thing is, I'm sure all of these actors did sign a release back in 1976 when they were shooting. Uh, the problem is they lost a lot of them. So they had to go back years later and have them sign releases again. And at this point, Star Wars obviously was a huge success. And she had realized that, oh, well, maybe, you know, I, I should be able to get something out of this as well. And when that wasn't the case, basically that threw the whole Tonica Sisters thing uh, out of the out of the the pictures. So, uh, the other sister, Christine Hewitt, did sign the release. Uh, you know, b- before she passed. But, um, yeah. So she's totally on board now. We did meet up for um, some uh, tea last year, and uh, yeah, she's totally on board with having it happen. She wants to sign the release. So that's one of the things I asked Hasbro. Like, hey, how can we facilitate this like you know i'm just a regular person basically i don't know how to approach disney or lucasfilm and ask them to about any of this you know who's going to even know about the situation at this point so Mm. um yeah hopefully through hasbro we'll be able to finally you know get some movement on this because angela's down to have it happen and i know as collectors you know we've been wanting these figures for for ages now so uh hopefully this is finally uh finally the key to getting it to happen yeah, hope, I, I hope so. Um, and Hasbro should, you know, throw her some money for it. They should, they should compensate her in 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 some way for it. Um, uh, that's not going to happen. But <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I know it's not me, going to happen, but it should happen. Um, from what she told me, one of the the biggest problems she had was that she would have to buy her own figure rather than you know them sending her like you know. 20 figures once she did sign the release and they made the figure so what i think that that was part of her concern about it was that she had to buy her own figure which she didn't think was a great idea which i get that i mean yeah that's dumb no send her the i i did watch your your video and i think that fellow sam said he had to go to walmart to finally buy the jab of the hut play set like <laughs> come on you're a billion multi-billion dollar company get, 
send yeah. out some swag to people for goodness sakes yeah um, no it's um it, it's interesting but you know i i definitely hope that uh it happens and it's just kind of weird to be in the the midst of of all this you know this this, this part of star wars collecting lore you know like will i make it work will I not? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully yeah see if you can make it see if you can make it happen that'll that'll you know then that'll have to be make my, an action figure of you that, <laughs> i was gonna say that'll be my one contribution to like star wars collecting and then i'm done <laughs> <laughs> then you get to bow out and be like eh, enjoy that suckers but yeah let's see what happens as far as other things that uh, we talked about i did probe them on you know hey all these figures are starting to back up from vintage collection Jin and snoke oh. um you know we're also with black series it's all the last jedi six inch stuff that's been hanging around for a year and a half it's like what uh-huh. are you are you guys taking action to to deal with this and they're not I mean, they, they kind of said the same thing they always do which is basically you know we're, we're constantly working with our retail partners to best manage things and make sure that things are moving through distribution but it's kind of like well that's not going to happen if things are just sitting on the shelves i mean collecting dust because they are I'm, I'm sure you've seen like my photos of stuff literally collecting dust falling apart on the shelves yeah mm-hmm. and and the rare times when i actually go to a big box store because where i live they're not you know a round trip uh excursion to target for me is about two and a half hours um and yeah. there's no walmarts in the city so this is very rare that i go to any of these things um but on the times when i do yeah and it's there's, there's nothing there in fairness, that's also most of the aisle in general. It's not just Star Wars. Star Wars is particularly bare, but a lot of the, the Jurassic World stuff is pretty bare. Marvel Legends is pretty bare. Um, Ninja Turtles is pretty bare. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's bad. Like I, you know, I've been collecting this line nonstop since '96, and this is one of the worst points that I've I've ever seen it get to, where things are just like this bad. Like it, it, it really is. And this. This was what it was like back in like 1985 and 1986 because mm. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was buying the original toys at that point in time. And um, I do remember at the point in time where you just had Return of the Jedi figures and Power of the Force figures rotting on the shelves for years. Yeah. Um, I know you, you talked to them about making purple bathrobe guy Sim Alu because they do need to make Sim Alu so that people have, have got him and they can complete their collections with him. But I do remember going to a Toys R Us and seeing just a, like basically a wall of Sim Alu. Mm. <laughs> and, and I was like, I don't want this toy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is, well, what like, is this guy? It's like make an exclusive uh, convention, an action figure in three pack or, you know, like a multi pack that has all six of them or however many sure. there are. Yeah. I mean, or, or it's a Hasbro Pulse exclusive and you order it through there. Yeah. 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 Just, just we'll, we'll, we'll buy it. Even I will buy stupid old Sim Alu. I mean, um, they already on, have the other two, right? They did in two thousand four, they or two thousand three, they did. I think it was Janus de Janus de Gratis or Gratis de Janus or something yeah, like that. Janus, and, yeah, yeah, him, and then the other, the other dude, sir with a K, I think. Um, I used to know all the names. Uh, you know, they'd come roll off my tongue like nothing else. But you know, as the years go by, it's getting harder to remember. Cren Blista Vene. Oh wow, wow, yeah, okay, okay that one <laughs> yeah i mean well like i could i could go into my clone war shelf that i'm looking at right now and i wouldn't be able to name all the clones now yeah yeah exactly so, yeah um, yeah or possibly even some of the more obscure bounty hunters that they released for that line right yeah so there's that uh as far as any other un- interesting things they mentioned not so much we kind of just pushed towards certain characters we still need like Bodhi rook from rogue one <laughs> yeah uh he's Please. a huge one yeah i mean we have pretty much the whole like core team except for Bodhi rook so mm-hmm. we need him i'd uh, love i'd love so many more black series ones from that that line but at least give me Bodhi rook yeah i mean i think that's the, the key thing is that you round out these core characters and like they're uh, key outfits that they had in the film, yeah. uh, in any of these films, and uh, the same thing. You know, we I also mentioned the short trooper because they did do two of the three short troopers uh, previously, and the the regular short trooper was a Walmart exclusive, which was a, a nightmare to find at the time. Mm. Oh, and, I got one. Of them. Um, yeah, I have. I think I have like five of them. <laughs> I, I love that figure. That's like one, like seriously, like one of my favorite, like black, si- the, like troopers. Period. I love that that design. It's awesome. Is it really? Wow. Yeah. I I got. Yeah, I, th- I think I've got. I think I have two of that, um, or I've got two different versions of of the short trooper. And I I can't tell you what the differences are, and I 
The fact that there's another one out there that there's a variation on, I don't know what that is either. But I think I watched a Dan Larson Toy Galaxy video where he pulled them apart and put them together into a weight that revealed that there was one that is is unmade. Um, But those are like in the way that like I don't understand what the difference is between the new release of the Stormtrooper or Boba Fett and his like arm gauntlets. I just Mm. like it doesn't stand out to me. I was like, wait, what's what's different here? Huh? If you pointed it out to me and I was looking at them both at the same time, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, you kill um, me with this, Tom. I know, I know. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I'm looking forward to you doing a Vintage Collection Stormtrooper review that compares it to the last Vintage Collection Stormtrooper. Because then I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh, that's what's different. Yeah. Because I I legitimately have no idea. Yeah. there's, there's, There's so many differences between all these things. Um, but yeah, no, so, uh, there's that. And we obviously really need that, that figure. And, mm-hmm. yeah, we, you know, when you think about it, going back to Rogue One, we don't even really see them all that well. Like, no. you know, the, we don't, they, they're just like, we see them like briefly, but we don't really get like close ups or anything of them. So yeah, the death troopers got all, all the screen time in that, that movie, which I was yeah. happy with. Cause I loved them. I thought they yeah. were great. Why do you, why are they called death troopers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, wait, is that a question for me? Yeah, it's a oh. joke. Oh, because <laughs> they die? Because they all die. Because <laughs> uh, they all die. Oh, poor Death Troopers. I just got an email right now from, from Hasbro Pulse. Breaking news from San Diego. Your favorite brands just dropped some epic pre-orders. It's Transformers, Marvel, Power Rangers, and more. What's missing from that list? Star Wars. In any case, um, yeah, so I also <laughs> mentioned, and, and I talked to Sam actually at the at the breakfast event on Thursday, and um, I said, hey, you know, uh, there's one figure I'm going to you know, bring up. You know, this is the one figure that I'd like to see that you haven't done yet. And that is uh, Kira in her primary outfit from Solo. Not the one that she wears for the first 10 minutes of the film, but like <laughs> yeah. her, her proper outfit or proper look. Um, you mean the that, cool one from the advertisements with the cape? Exactly. The, the mm-hmm. really, yeah, the cape and the skirt or sometimes she's wearing the pants like it kind of changes. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the tan leather jacket, like just the mm-hmm. badass looking suit, you know, it's like Kessel that's the, one. Yeah. Ke- yeah. That's, that, let's call her that Kessel Kira. Yeah. Um, like her primary outfit, like, like to, it, it's one of those, like I was saying, like there are certain things they need to do to round out the core, like characters from each of these films. And that's like one that's like totally lacking. It really is. It really is. Cause I know we got the other Kira, but as you pointed out, she was wearing teeny bopper Kira outfit for five minutes at the start of the movie. Her 80s outfit. Yeah, the 80s outfit one, which is fine, but it's like, I'm not exactly clamoring for Han Solo in his, uh, he's wearing like a white jacket or something. Yeah, so I feel like that's something that's absolutely uh, missing, because, you know, like you said, she's in the marketing wearing that outfit, and the other one's nice, and one thing I will say is that, you know, I absolutely worship Amelia Clark, so, Mm -hmm. like, I buy, like, all the Daenerys Targaryen figures from Game of Thrones, and they all look awful, like, yeah. they don't look anything like her, but, like, yeah. Hasbro's Black Series, when they did, looks just like her. It looks exactly so, like her. It's perfect. Yeah, so it's like, why are they not doing this other one? So I have I have every faith that if they do, it's going to look freaking fantastic. So mm-hmm. I am just that, absolutely hoping that they do it. That, w- that might be my top Black Series want right now, honestly. Um, Me too. There's, there's a whole roster of things that I, you know, I want boring old Count Dooku. Um, Jar Jar, uh, season three, Ahsoka, a Cad Bane. I want all these things. I want obviously Bodie Rook, Mm -hmm. but I think honestly, they did, they honestly did a really nice job with the toy line for Solo. It was a really broad depth of figures, um, that after, you know, after you get, uh, past all those, those main characters and a good number of the, the sub characters, because we've got Moloch and we've got, um, patrol trooper yeah um mimban stormtrooper which showed up for you know long enough for them <laughs> to fall into a pit and <laughs> you know i guess they probably got out of the pit just fine um we got so many great things she's a main character she's wearing a cool cape yeah come on it's star wars give us our cool character with the cool cape yeah. it was amazing and i loved that character i loved that character that Absolutely. character, every time I watch that movie, I just keep thinking about, like, what's going through her mind here? Where does she go next? 
because it's so there's so much depth there. Um, yeah, that totally needs to be a Disney Plus series. Yeah, please, please give that to us, please. Yeah, but, she's um, free now because uh, because she killed everyone in King's Landing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's she's free now to go on to other uh, adventures within the Star Wars universe, which I 100 percent will uh, support. And yeah, so uh, for, as far as exclusives go, Palpatine is still coming in Black Series, and they did mm-hmm. have it on display. Uh, it looks very similar to the one they did before. However, it looks like they reworked the face. I'm not sure if it's a brand new sculpt, but at the very least, it is painted differently. I think and it's just the paint. Uh, yeah, and it does come with two interchangeable portraits, so those mm-hmm. look different. Those are definitely new. Mm-hmm. Um, and he comes with the lightning. He comes with the throne. This this thing looks really really good in person. I'm really excited mm-hmm. for you to see it once they start shipping. I'm crazy excited for that one. So I bought a third party throne, which I've shown you in the past. Um, which is great. So I'm sitting here looking at it right now on my shelf. Um, and I, I made my own little custom cloak for it um, so that the the hood drapes on him properly. So I'm crazy excited to get the new one, honestly, because it just means I'm going to have two Palpatines and one is going to be shooting lightning bolts all the time. I uh-huh. might take the other one and customize a, a, a you know, office dual Darth Sidious for that one, um, because I was sort of hoping they'd have revealed one of those by now. Um, oh yeah yeah that'd be a so, good one for we'll sure see. yeah yeah i mean we need that all right so let's go to move away from hasbro and we're continuing to look at star wars still uh okay so hot toys uh, had a couple of new figures on display in their booth some of them looked really really good uh and i did take some photos and video i'll get that up on the channel uh shortly here um, but yeah, the, the major one, of course, was Padme Amidala because, you know, that was one that people have been asking for for a long time. They've been focusing on the prequels and over the last couple of years. And uh, finally, they're going to do it. So they showed us uh, Padme Amidala from Attack of the Clones. Yeah, I mean, she, she looks great from the pictures I've seen of that. I'm glad that like like Hasbro's Black Series one that came out a few months ago. I'm glad mm-hmm. they're finally doing that. I'm glad that Padme is getting the love that Revenge of the Sith did not give Padme. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a great, it's a great iconic out, outfit and, and it's not, this isn't the, um, not to upset anyone, but this is, this is not the torn, uh, waistline version, right? This is just straight up white outfit Padme. Exactly. And yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I think it looks good. I'm not completely hundred percent sold on the likeness. It just seems like something's slightly off with it. Hmm. Uh, I can't pinpoint what it is, but um, hopefully I'll, that'll come through in the video that I post later. But yeah, it, something's just a little bit off, which hmm. con- it's kind of the opposite of Qui Gon Jinn because they had him on display, and in the photos I thought something looked a little bit off, but in person he is like spot on, like one of their best likenesses in Star Wars. Jesus, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, they also had the battle droid, uh, oh, which battle which looks really cool. Uh, they had some Jawas. Those are new. Uh, a gonk droid. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, R5-D4, which I don't know if they showed R5-D4 before, but they did have him. They had some clones from uh, Revenge of the Sith, the uh, Utapau clones, Commander Cody, mm-hmm. and uh, Darth Maul. Like, uh, or rather Maul, sorry. Um Maul I'm always going to call him Darth Maul. I'm always going to call him Darth Maul. Right. It would, it's interesting because... What have we gotten from Solo so far? We've gotten like a couple of troopers. We've gotten Han in two different outfits and in uh, Hot Toys. Yeah. Oh wow! I, I don't I don't know what they they've done. Have they done? All right. So sorry. Say those again. They had Han in a couple of different outfits and so, so they've done a couple of troopers. I think it's been the Patrol Trooper and the Minban Trooper, and then they did Han. They did a Han in a Minban outfit and then just regular Han Solo and. Hmm. Now it's Maul, so it's like they're completely skipping over like more of the core characters and just going straight to uh, Maul, which is awesome. But it's also kind of like, okay, where's Lando? Where's Kira? Give the people what they want. Maul, uh, you know, Maul. Maul people want first. Maul is like Darth Vader and Boba Fett in level of like sellability. You can always sell Darth Maul. You can always sell yeah. Darth Vader. You can yeah. always sell Boba Fett. Yeah, I I agree with that. It's uh, it's weird though because. Like they just they just uh, put out Maul like from Darth Maul from Phantom Menace like like very recently and and now there here's another Maul, um, but it looks awesome. I, mm-hmm. I actually think it looks more screen accurate than the regular Darth Maul they just did looks. Yeah, there's a good chance I might actually jump on this one. Possibly, maybe. That's fair. How much does that go for? Uh, I think it was like I don't know exactly. Probably around two fifty, two seventy. <laughs> 
Payment plans. Payment plans. Payment plans. Yeah. Well, I mean, so when the uh, when they after Solo came out and they released like the press photos of like new Darth Maul and like you know he's Ray Park is an older dude now, so his face is let's say filled out a little bit. Um, in the same way that my face has filled out a little bit. Um, <laughs> I loved seeing older Darth Maul. Um, and yeah, the new Hot Toys thing like captures that so perfectly. I, I yeah. desperately want a uh, Black Series version of this. I sure. so badly because, you know, one of my disappointments with the prequels was spending a year leading up to The Phantom Menace, seeing every cover of every magazine state, this is the new face of evil, Darth Maul, and then he's just unceremoniously bumped off. Right. Um, and he doesn't get anything to do in the movie beyond show up and be a boss fight. Um, sure. Thank God the Clone Wars and Rebels came and now Solo and have like brought depth to this character. Well, I mean, who looks like they did 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally seeing that on screen took me back to 1999 and made me feel like what I was hoping that the prequel trilogy was going to be. Uh-huh. Like it, it gave me that that thing that I thought, oh, this is this is where this this is what the story is going to be. This is what these three movies are going to be sort of like. Yeah, it was a nice touch. I know a lot of people. There are there are quite a few people that don't really like it, and there's there, I have friends that are like just general moviegoers, not not really huge into Star Wars, and they're kind of like, okay, well, why is why is Maul in, in this movie? Didn't he die in Episode One? So I mean, yeah. I, I get that, but yeah, it's nice when they throw things in for the fans every now and then that are that are like hardcore into everything Star Wars, right? And that yeah. that's what this was, and the same thing with Bail Organa in Rogue One, I think. Oh God, yeah. Um, but yeah, so he looks great. It just kind of seems odd that they're they're skipping over, you know, some of those other characters in Hot Toys because, I mean, and, and, and you know, I'd have to see them first, of course, but I have a really hard time, like, thinking that I would not buy a Childish Gambino Lando from Hot Toys or Kira even. It's like, that would be fabulous. Why haven't they done it? I've, I've, I mean, I've got, I've told you about my, my friend that just has her Lando shelf. And yeah. that's just a bunch of Lando stuff. It's Funko Pops. And then, like, now that they've got the, the, the six-inch Landos and the vintage collection uh, Childish Gambino Lando, like, I get those for her and send them to her so that she's got them set up on her shelf because she just loves all the Lando stuff. Like, yeah. I'm also in the camp that wants uh, San Diego Comic-Con's exclusive to be um, Hawaiian shirt Lando from mm. the end of Solo. <laughs> like, you'll get me paying secondary market prices for that one, guys. <laughs> Dude, wouldn't that be like a perfect exclusive with like a yeah. smiling face sculpt? Yeah, exactly. Because it's not, you don't need it for your mainline thing. You just, if if you're really like, I really want that one specific goofy thing, it would be so much fun. I'd love it. I'd love it. And yeah. seriously, I'd pay the secondary market prices for it. Because I'd just be like, no, I need to have it. Yeah. I mean, I hate the word, but I seriously like stan Donald Glover. So I'll take anything they want to give me that's uh, mm-hmm. Donald Glover Lando. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think I told you before when they announced that they were maybe going to make a uh, Han Solo movie, um, I I really poo pooed it, and I was like, Nah, I don't need a Han Solo movie. Nah, grumpy, grumpy, grumpy old man. But when we thought about it, and I was talking to my friends, I was like, But imagine if they had Lando, and he's played by Donald Glover. That would be amazing. And then when they announced it, it was it was. We can have nice things. And then no one went and saw the movie, and we can't have nice things. But um, we right. had it for that movie. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, as far as Star Wars' influence on Comic-Con, even though it wasn't heavily present in Hasbro's toys, uh, there was a pretty cool display that they had where they had uh, quite a few different uh, sets of armor from troopers across the Star Wars saga. So you had things like the Biker Scout, the Rogue One Stormtrooper, uh, the, the Death Trooper, the uh, Scarif Stormtrooper, or Short Trooper, rather. Uh, they had the uh, the brand new Sith Trooper from The Rise of Skywalker. And uh, they also had Captain Phasma and a regular First Order Stormtrooper, as well as the First Order TIE pilot. So yeah, uh, it, it's always cool to see things like this, because uh, the, these are obviously like official like Lucasfilm costumes and... Um, you know, it's really cool to see props and stuff like in person, I think. Um, so basically, these were all lined up like against like a wall. And then they had a huge screen above and it was playing clips from different Star Wars films. And every now and then it would play the, the teaser trailer for The Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it was just a little interactive Star Wars thing. And, you know, you had people that were kind of just stopping and watching the clips and people that were going there to take photos and 
Um, this was a good spot where cosplayers and Star Wars outfits were also going and just kind of setting themselves up so they could take photos with guests and stuff. So yeah, that's super fun. No, I watched a little video of it. That's that's pretty cool. Um, I while I sit here and I can poo poo. Oh, it's just another stormtrooper. I see them all lined up like that, and I was like, eh, that'll be a pretty fun display, you know, in a, a few more months. I'll just I'll reconfigure my display and set all my figures up like that. <laughs> um, it's like seriously, like. Lena, my, my lovely wife, was tell, telling me about, um, you know, while I was complaining about the red stormtrooper, she said, yeah, but now you can take your uh, red emperor guards and your Snoke guards and your red stormtroopers and line them all up. That'll look cool. It's like, yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah. 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 That, that is that is true. Like, I think Marvel Legends did, uh, or no, I don't think it was Marvel Legends. I think it might have been SH Figure Arts that did, like, a Hall of Armor back, backdrop for the Iron Man costumes. Oh, yeah. And then you could just take all your figures and just, like, put them in there. Oh, shoot. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. And it'd be pretty neat if there was something, like, for Star Wars where, you know, just maybe, like, a First Order, like, like background, like a hallway mm-hmm. or something. And then you just have all the different troopers or... Not necessarily First Order. It could be, obviously, Galactic Empire or whatever. But mm-hmm. they look similar enough, the aesthetics of their craft and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is, it's, it's, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think they all look pretty similar. Um, but, yeah, other than that, there wasn't a panel for The Rise of Skywalker. I assume they're saving a lot of stuff for the D23 uh, Expo that's coming up in August. I'm going to give uh, you my prediction on that right now. Okay. D23 Expo, what they're going to show is not a new trailer. It's going to be a behind the scenes scissor reel. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I, I would, I would, I would bet money on that. Um, don't, don't get excited about that. I think it's, um, yeah, you know, the thing is like, I, I kind of feel like the way star Wars has gone over the last couple of years. And you know, I'm not one, I know you're not either one of those people that's like, Oh, star Wars is ruined. Everybody hates right. star Wars. This and that. Like, I don't think that's true at all. I think that a lot of the hype has dwindled down in yep. a lot of respects, but I think they really need to drum up the hype this time for this mm-hmm. final, you know, entry into the, St- the Skywalker saga. And I think they need the trailer. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think they really need to make a, a great impact uh, at D23 and have maybe the, you know, the, the cast, like the core cast there at least. Yeah, I hope um, so. You know, some 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 cool stuff. I don't know if Hasbro is going to be there or not. I assume that there might be something, but. No, I, I, I read that they're 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 going to be there, but they're not they're not going to be showing anything new there either. I mean, that That's would be the, the perfect opportunity to show like Rise of Skywalker toys. I know, but they're not they're not going to. It's it's like they're saving it all for uh, Triple Force Friday um, for some reason. That's the thing with Triple Force Friday. It's like, how, how do you know what you want to buy if you don't know what's going to be in stores? You know, it's like it doesn't. It Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I think your, your friend Adam Paulus uh, uh, feels very strongly in that that regard as well. Right. It's like you you can get us hyped up about this stuff and then we'll be excited to go buy it but if it's just like i don't don't know what the heck this stuff is you know we're not we're not just going to jump in and buy it now like we did for 2015 or back in 1999 before the you know phantom menace now we're going to be more wait and see like yeah i think i think their their campaign on this is, is is not good i don't think it's i don't think it's a good idea uh, I have a feeling that it's going to probably be the worst product launch in terms of like what people act like sales numbers, because it just seems mm-hmm. like at this point, people are used to the designs repeating themselves. I think that was a really big thing between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. And I think yeah. that this wait and see approach is going to be even more prevalent this time around. And, um, you know, people that are maybe more casual collectors or people, you know, just like general toy goers, let's call them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a new word, toy goers. Sure. Uh, I think they're going to be a lot more hands off this time until, you know, it comes closer to the movie and, you know, they get to actually see what's in the movie mm-hmm. before they, they go and decide what where they're going to spend their money. So I don't think I bought a single Praetorian guard until The Last Jedi came out and I could decide whether or not they were going to be relevant in the movie or not. And then they were awesome. So I, you know, I got them, but I don't think I bought one before the uh, before the movie came out. Yeah, they were awesome, except for their magical disappearing blades and stuff. But. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> a, a slight continuity error in a Star Wars movie? Yeah. Impossible. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like that one with Luke kicking the, you know, on the skiff where he kicks that guy, but he never <laughs> even hits him, but he reacts. Um, I remember when people used to yell uh, with, with rage that the Emperor went out like a chump because he should have been able to fly. 
Like, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Like, people use, oh, the Emperor, Darth Vader just picks him up and throws him down an elevator shaft. He was just so powerful in the Force, he should have flown. It's like, what? Yeah, oh, come on. It's, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's an error in a movie, guys. It's an error in a movie. But yeah, I think that pretty well covers uh, San Diego Comic-Con and Star Wars, and mm-hmm. uh, as well as everything that came, or, you know, what little came from Hasbro and yep. Hot Toys and, uh, you know, anything else that was on hand for, uh, you know, drumming up hype in The Rise of Skywalker. So, yeah, yeah, um, not much. So do you have any uh, parting thoughts, Tom, you'd like to uh, bring up before we wrap my parting thoughts are that the Sith Stormtrooper is not even going to be referred to as a Sith Stormtrooper in the movie. It is purely a marketing tool to get people to run out and buy them. Um, I think it's just a red Stormtrooper. That may very well be. It's it's not like they name most of these troopers in any of the films anyway. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, it, I think it's a really interesting name. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. the Sith, the Sith haven't been part of the sequel trilogy, so it's like... It's interesting, but you might very well be right. It could just be like a marketing thing that's going to throw us all off, and yep. they're just going to be red stormtroopers. Yep. Yeah, I'd love to be wrong, but uh, yeah. my 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 current feeling on that is they're just red stormtroopers that work for the first order, and so they have nothing at all to do with the Sith. But p- prove me wrong, Star Wars. You surprised me with the Last Jedi. You surprised me with Solo. You can surprise me again. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Yes, indeed. Uh, but yeah, Tom, as always, it's been a pleasure. Uh, where can our listeners go to find you online? Oh, yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter as Woozle and Demon or on Facebook as uh, Tom Charlton. And uh, my profile picture is no longer the Kyla Ren picture. It is. Oh, it's a little ghost <laughs> on Facebook. A ghost. I'm a little ghost from a, a Nickelodeon promo that my wife did. <laughs> All right. Very cool. So I'll go ahead and throw links in the show notes. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, go and check out Tom. He's a uh, he's funny. He's a. Uh he, he posts some interesting stuff, but if it doesn't capture your humor, then uh, you probably don't have much of a sense of humor anyway. <laughs> well, I do have a, a dark sense of humor, so. Yeah. There's that as well. There's that as well. <laughs> well all right, Tom. Uh, you take care over there in uh, New York, and I'm going to continue working on this coverage from San Diego Comic-Con 2019. Thanks, Victoria. Looking forward to seeing more. Have a great one. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thanks again to Tom Charlton for coming onto the show and discussing San Diego Comic Con and uh, all the Star Wars reveals or lack thereof uh, this year. So check him out online. I will throw links to his social media pages in the show notes. If you aren't already, subscribe to the place it all started the Victoria's Cantina YouTube channel, where I review new toys and showcase retro toys from the past. You can also follow us for news and updates on Facebook by looking up Victoria's Cantina toy photography on Instagram at Victoria's Cantina and a constant drip of toy related and other random and nonsensical tweets on Twitter at Vix Cantina. If you're so inclined, we are on Patreon. Gain greater access to Victoria's Cantina by becoming a Patreon Cantina patron. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll help to keep the show going and also get exclusive content such as access to a private Twitter feed, early access to toy reviews, and behind-the-scenes featurettes. And if you can't, but you still want to help us out, one of the easiest and most helpful things you can do is leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts. It only takes a minute, so hit that 5-star rating and leave a note stating why you enjoy the show. It'll make us more visible on iTunes and help others to find our show. As always, I'm Victoria, and no matter where you're listening out in the galaxy, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Cantina Chatter Podcast. <laughs>